All right, welcome back to Mr. P. Helps with Algebra 2. This is Unit 1, Topic 2, SLT number 9. All right, if a line has a negative slope, what is its general direction? It's going down. Positive slopes go up. And description of a line with zero slopes, that would be straight across. That would be horizontal. And the direction of a line whose slope is undefined would be straight up and down. That would be vertical. All right, so SLT number nine, and this one we are also so using uh, calculate and interpreting average rate of changes. All right, so that's what we're doing. So what is the average rate of a car for the first hour? So in the first hour, it says that they drove 52 miles. So that's 52 miles per hour. And in the second hour, they drove 36. So that'd be 36 miles per hour. Now, in the last two hours, they drove 94 miles. So that means that's 94 miles per two hours, which means that is a grand total of, what is that, 47 miles per hour. All right, so what is the average rate of the car over the entire trip? So all you need to do then is add up. So 52 plus 36 plus 94 so add those three numbers up and divide it by four hours. Now it'll give you a total average speed. What is the average speed of the car over the first two hours of the trip? The first two hours, so you do 52 plus 36, which is going to give you 88, and divide that by two hours, and that's going to be an average of 44 hours per mile. 40, I'm sorry, 44 miles per hour. Is it possible that the car ever reached 80 miles per hour? Yes, it is, because you could have been stopped, a matter of fact. You could have stopped for a little bit and then driven 80 miles per hour, and that kind of makes up for the time that you had stopped. So when you have an average, that doesn't mean, so if I tell you that this is the average rate of change, this is the speed, so that's the line, that doesn't mean that you are going exactly that speed the entire time. That just means that that is on average. So you could have been going nothing and then all of a sudden went really, really fast and that's going to catch up and be at the exact same place. Uh, at what point do you think Sally and Kyriel stopped it for gas? Okay, so if you had to guess, I would probably guess during the second hour. And the reason why I'm guessing that is because that was the time that they went the least amount of miles in an hour. So it's very likely that they were probably stopped during that time. They're probably going faster than 36 miles per hour, but they stopped for a little bit which means that the time was passing and obviously they weren't getting anywhere. So that would be my best guess. Okay, so let's get to how to find rate of change. Now back in Algebra 1, you did y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So if you had a point like 2, 7, and another point at, it uh, doesn't really matter, it could be 3, 9, you would have done y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So it's the same thing you're going to do for this. 9 minus 7 would have been 2. And 3 minus 2 would have been 1, so that had a rate of change of 2. All right, so we're going to do the exact same thing. So Charlie began driving at 8 o'clock, and he began at the 23-mile marker. Uh, and then ended at the 153-mile marker at 1030. What was Charlie's average speed? Well, speed is always measured in um, miles per hour. So miles is going to be our Y, that's on top, and hours is going to be our bottom. So that means it's going to be 8 o'clock. 23 mile marker is going to be where he started and 1030 or I can say 10.5 because that would be 10 and a half hours 10.5 comma 153 so now all you got to do is go y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 so 153 minus 23 over 1030 minus eight o'clock so that's going to be two and a half hours and 153 minus 23 is going to be 130 and then you're going to need to calculate a 130 divided by 2.5 and that's going to give you your um, average change of speed all right so average rate of speed all right so uh jordan's 12th birthday he was 52 inches tall 16th birthday was 64 inches tall what was the average growth over time so that's growth on top time on bottom growth so that's 64 minus 52 on top, 16 minus 12 on bottom. 64 minus 52 is going to give you four, no, 12. And 16 minus 12 makes 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 3 inches per year. All right, what is the average rate of growth for the first two weeks? 
So now we're looking at just intervals of time. So in this case, when it says just the first two weeks, that means from start to the end of the two weeks. That does not mean from start to the very end of the entire data, just during this time frame. So that's y2 minus y1, 12 minus 3 over 2 minus 0. And when you do that, you're going to get 9 over 2, which is about 4 and a half. All right, what was the average? So that's four and a half inches per week. What was the average rate of growth in the first five weeks? So if I delete that, so now we've got a new interval of time. So now we're going the first five weeks. So that's from the start to the end. So that's 27 minus 3 over 5 minus 0. So that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All right, so 27 minus 3 is going to be 24. 24 over... Um, 5 minus 0 is 5. 24 divided by 5 is going to give you, was that, 4.8. During the which weekly period did the plant seed seem to grow the fastest? Okay, so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to find the amount that it grew per week. So this increased by 4, this increased by 5, this increased by 7, this one increased by 8, which is more than 7. Okay, this would have been plus 7, plus 5, plus 4. Four. But you got to take notice in the fact that this is over a time period of two weeks. So that's really only increasing by four inches per week. Whereas this is seven inches in one week. So really from two to three, from the interval of two to three is when it increased the most. Seven. All right, what is the rise change of y? So four, three, four, three is right there. Three, one is right there. What is the rise? It looks like it rises 2, it runs 1, so 2 divided by 1 is 2. That's easy. 1, 1, 4, 2. Yes, you, you can put that in there. Uh, that is a rise of 1 and a run of 3. So this is going to be 1 third. This is, this is a slope of 3. This is a slope of 1 third. They're not the same thing. So this is 2 minus 1 over 4 minus 1, which once again gives you 1 over 3. All right, please give it a like to help you learn something about uh, finding rates of change. And subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks again for watching.